Dear students, welcome to this recorded lecture about lower limb amputations. I'm Dr. Ali Sabur, Professor of Vascular Surgery at Ain Shams Medical School. By the end of this lecture, you should be able to identify different types of lower limb amputations and its indications. Describe the principles of the operations. Describe specific operative preparation. Outline post-operative rehabilitation. And finally, identify post-operative complications. In general, amputations are done for the following indications. The vascular indications for amputation includes extensive ischemic gangrene. I'm going to give you examples with pictures. Some patients with ischemia have a non-reconstructable arterial tree. If those patients are having intractable ischemic rest pain, this is another vascular indication for amputation. The second group of patients who will need amputation are those with extensive trauma. Severe crush injury, what we call a mangled limb, is an indication for amputation. I'm going to show you a picture of a mangled limb later on. Sometimes we do amputation for an inflammatory indication. Some inflammatory conditions, amputation is life saving. The classical example is amputation for gas gangrene. If there is extensive foot destruction, as in destructive fungus infection of the foot, what is known as Madura foot, or with refractory septic arthritis or osteomyelitis, amputation is the solution. In diabetic patients with diabetic foot sepsis, when the bone is destroyed, we do conservative amputations. The classic indications include osteosarcoma, some osteoclastomas, soft tissue sarcomas, infiltrating malignant melanoma, and epitheliomas. And lastly, from the orthopedic point of view, some uncorrectable deformities are managed by amputation. This patient with extensive foot gangrene needs amputation, of course. Note that for the amputation stump to heal, it needs good blood supply. The level of amputation will be discussed later. This is what we call a mangled limb. This post-traumatic limb with extensive soft tissue and bone destruction, of course, needs amputation. Another indication for amputation is gas gangrene. This patient has gas gangrene. Now it's urgent. Urgent amputation is needed as a life-saving procedure. For all patients undergoing major amputation, proper preoperative preparation is very important. For all patients, a written informed consent should be obtained. If possible, and if the amputation is not urgent or life-saving, the patient should be convinced and the patient himself should ask for the amputation. For all patients undergoing above knee amputation, blood for a possible intraoperative transfusion should be prepared. If amputation is not urgent, general condition of the patient should be optimized for better healing. This includes correction of low serum albumin and severe anemia. In urgent conditions, these are corrected in the operative and post-operative phase. Consider the use of prophylactic antibiotics. Amputations 
certain limbs with obvious infection or contamination will continue therapeutic antibiotics course. Patient prepared for general or spinal anesthesia. Planning for a major lower limb amputation, remember that the main function of the lower limbs is weight bearing. This means that stability and adequate limb length are essential. For stability and adequate limb length, here are some general rules. The stump should be of a sufficient length to give the required leverage action. In below the knee amputation, it should not be less than 8 cm, preferably 10 to 12. In above knee amputation, it should not be less than 20 cm. There should be a room for an artificial joint. For this reason, the stump should not be too long as well. 12 cm above the knee joint in above knee amputation and 8 cm above the ankle joint in below knee amputation. Every attempt be made to preserve the knee joint. And mind you that a well-shaped stump can hold a prosthesis by simple suction. This is true for the modern prosthetic devices. And the ideal stump that we are aiming to have should be painless, should be conical in shape, should be covered with healthy skin, should have an optimal length, it should have a good muscle control and a good range of movement to move the artificial or the prosthetic limb effectively. You can use a tourniquet to minimize the blood loss. If a tourniquet is used, it should be applied above the level of amputation on a part that has only one bone. For the lower limb, the tourniquet, if used, is applied over the thigh. Mind you that a tourniquet is not used in amputations for ischemic limbs. Actually, it is not needed. Now, let us specifically talk about below knee amputation. Indications for below knee amputation includes in acute lower limb ischemia, unsalvageable irreversible acute ischemia, when the obstruction involves vessels below the popliteal artery, that's to say, with intact popliteal pulse. In chronic lower limb ischemia, below knee amputation is done for unreconstructable arterial tree involving vessels below the popliteal artery in patients having stage 3 untolerable rest pain or stage 4 tissue loss in the form of gangrene. Unreconstructable trauma, that is the mangled limb, is another indication for below knee amputation if the destruction is below the mid tibia. Below knee amputation is done for some tumors of the soft tissue and bone of the distal limb and it is done for unreconstructable congenital deformities of the foot with complications. In below knee amputation, consider the following surgical tips. We usually design a long procedure flap. As you can see here, this is a long procedure flap. Again, this is a long procedure flap. We mark the flaps on the skin. Then we incise the skin and fascia, followed by the muscles. We usually use a diathermy. We take care not to dissect the skin and subcutaneous tissue separate from the muscles to preserve the vascularity of the flap. We identify the neurovascular bundle. 
we ligate the vessel and transect it. Then we sharply transect the nerves under tension. When we transect the nerve under tension and release it, it retracts. This avoids friction with the nerve stump and avoids a neuroma. Finally, we divide the bone and we start with the fibula, which is the weaker bone, and we divide it shorter than the tibia. At the end, we use the posterior mycotaneous flap to cover the bony stump. We place a suction drain deep to the muscle and we close the skin and we take care not to exert any tension on the suture line. As you can see from the picture, the long posterior mycotaneous flap has a better blood supply. This is why it is commonly used in amputation for ischemia. Another flap used in below knee amputation is the skew flap. The only difference is this flap is that it has two almost equal lateral flaps, as you can see in the picture. Talking specifically about above knee amputation, it is indicated in unsalvageable, irreversible, acute lower limb ischemia that involves vessels below the common femoral artery. In chronic lower limb ischemia, above knee amputation is indicated in unreconstructable arterial tree in patients with stage 3 and 4 involving vessels below the common. And here are some surgical tips that should be considered in patients with above knee amputation. As you can see, we use equal curved anterior and posterior flaps. The skin, deep fascia and muscles are transected. The vascular bundle is identified. It's ligated and transected. Then the sciatic nerve is identified. It is pulled down and transected. Notice that the artery the sciatic nerve has an artery, which is called the sciatic artery. This should be identified and ligated, but do not cauterize it. Then the bone is sold at a higher level. Finally, the muscles are approximated over the bone. A drain is left deep to the muscles, the fascia, subcutaneous tissue, and skin are closed and again do not use any tension during closure. Emergency amputations can be done by what you call the guillotine method. In the guillotine method or the guillotine amputation all tissues are divided at the level of bone section. It is done as a life-saving procedure and Usually, definitive amputation is required later on to get a formal stump. For all patients undergoing major amputation, post-operative care of the amputee includes adequate pain relief, we usually use opiates, we give prophylactic antibiotics, the drains are removed after 24 to 48 hours, and the stitches are removed after 10 days. Do not forget to care for the other limb and avoid pressure ulcers. We usually do this by elevating the limb over a pillow. Early mobilization and physiotherapy to prevent flexion deformity is of great importance. Possible complications of amputation includes hematoma formation, and this occurs if hemostasis is not perfect. 
thumb infection is a serious complication. And if a metathized thumb is contaminated by fecal matter, a possibility of gas gangrene should be considered. Another complication is ischemia of the flaps. And flap ischemia will predispose to wound dehiescence. When wound dehiescence due, due to flap ischemia occurs after treatment, this stump usually needs a higher revision. Deep venous thrombosis and subsequent pulmonary embolism is another complication of patients undergoing major amputation. This is why those patients need prophylactic heparin. Eight complications of major amputation includes deep localized infections, usually present in the form of an infected sinus, sometimes with an underlying bone sequestrum, scar adherent to the bone, an amputation neuroma, which is painful, causalgia, a phantom limb, when the patient's is feeling that his limb is still intact. And finally, stump ulceration due to friction of the stump with the prosthesis. These are examples. For example, this is a stump hematoma. Note that the skin blisters here may point to an ischemic flap. This is above knee stump, which is obviously infected, with partial wound dehiescence at its medial end. This amputation stump has a posterior flap, which is evidently ischemic. Again, with this ischemia of the flap, there is wound dehiescence here. This patient is having severe infection that led to complete wound dehiescence. After treatment of infection, this patient will need revision of his amputation at a higher level. This is a late complication that includes a discharging sinus. This usually indicates a deep wound infection. This heel stump shows a stump ulcer due to friction of the stump with the prosthesis. As you can see, in this right below knee stump, The tibia is not properly covered by muscles of the posterior flap, and the skin is now adherent to the bone. This can eventually lead to skin ulceration. This picture is an exploration for the stump of a patient complaining of persistent stump pain when he puts on his prosthesis. This picture shows a stump neuroma. Stump neuroma should be removed. Stump neuroma is predisposed to by crushing of the nerve during the amputation operation. This is why you should transect the nerve sharply and don't crush it. Rehabilitation of the amputee is very important in the management plan. Before amputation, the physician describes to the patient the post-surgical rehabilitation program. Some patients will need psychological counseling. Early mobilization and physiotherapy is important. 
exercises are intended to improve the general condition and the balance, to stretch the hip and knee to avoid flexion deformity, and to strengthen all extremities. Upper stump bandage promotes the natural process of shrinking that must occur before a prosthesis can be used. Usually, permanent prosthetic fitting is possible from two to six months after surgery. This is when the surgical incision has healed, the swelling has gone, over, has gone down, and the stump has gained its final conical shape. However, a temporary prosthesis can be provided immediately following amputation or within two to three weeks after surgery. These are other types of less commonly used lower limb amputations that have specific indications. They are used, they are mentioned here for enumeration. Knee disarticulation, it's no longer used. It has a long bulbous stump and inferior leverage action. Hip disarticulation, with amputation to the hip joint capsule, removing the entire lower extremity with closure of the remaining musculature over the exposed acetabulum. Sometime used in patients with non-reconstructible ischemia and occlusion of the iliac artery. Finally, hindquarter amputation for bone and soft tissue tumors in the pelvis, hip, and upper thigh regions. Now, let us talk about types of foot amputation. The foot can be amputated at several levels depending upon the degree of soft tissue and bone destruction and the vascularity. We have several types, starting with the transmetatarsal amputation or the tarsometatarsal amputation or the med tarsal or Schoport amputation. When limb fitting facilities are limited, an end bearing amputation may be preferable. And this is what we call the Symes amputation. In Symes amputation, it is done through the ankle joint. The foot is removed, but the heel pad is saved, so the patient can put weight on the leg without a prosthesis. Symes amputation is not suitable for ischemic limbs because of the poor healing of the heel flap. You can test yourself now. What is the type of this amputation? Yes, this is transmetatarsal amputation. I hope that by now you are able to identify different types of lower limb amputations and its indications, describe the principles of the amputation operation, describe specific preoperative preparation for a patient prepared for major amputation, outline postoperative rehabilitation, and identify postoperative complications. Thank you.